This is Trade Flow News, bringing you relevant news and insights from around the world. Trade Flow News, enabling trade for SMEs and economies worldwide. These are some of the key topics that we will be looking into in today's program. First, let's take a look at the overnight headlines which are impacting the commodity markets. Oil prices climbed on Monday as the borders reopened in China, the world's top crude importer, boosting the outlook for fuel demand growth and offsetting global recession concerns. Brent crude futures rose 90 cents, or 1.2 percent, to $79.47 a barrel at 0520 GMT, while U.S. West Texas intermediate crude was up 90 cents, or 1.2 percent, at $74.67. Hopes for less aggressive U.S. interest rate rises are buoying financial markets and depressing the dollar. A weaker greenback makes dollar-denominated commodities more affordable for investors holding other currencies. The increasing need to secure energy supplies after easing COVID-19 restrictions has pushed China to gradually resume Australian coal imports and urge domestic miners to boost their already record output. The lifting of the unofficial ban on Australian coal imports, which were halted in 2020 in a fit of Chinese peak over questions on COVID's origins, is the clearest sign yet of the renewed ties between them. The resumption is also a reminder of their economic interdependence as Australia's raw materials play a crucial role in fueling the export-oriented economy of China, the world's biggest coal consumer and producer. Moving on to the top news in the energy sector. The U.S. Department of Energy has rejected the first batch of bids from oil companies to resupply a small amount of oil to the nation's emergency crude oil stockpile in February, according to a Doe spokesperson. The Doe last month had said it would purchase up to 3 million barrels for delivery to the Strategic Petroleum Reserve in February, the first buy since last year's record 180 million barrel release to tame U.S. pump prices. Following review of the initial submission, Doe will not be making any award selections for the February delivery window, the spokesperson said in an emailed statement. U.S. shale producer EOG Resources Inc. on Friday said it anticipates its activity in the Permian Basin to be flat this year, as supplies and equipment remain expensive and as it focuses on shareholder returns. Global oil supply will likely tighten this year, Chief Executive Ezra Jacob said at a Goldman Sachs conference in Miami, Florida, but he cautioned the demand outlook is currently more difficult to see. Oil prices started the year off with the biggest two-day fall in three decades amid growing concerns of a global recession, while natural gas prices slid 18% the first week of January as warmer-than-usual temperatures in the United States and Europe cut demand. Next, we have the top news in metal markets. Gold prices extended gains to an eight-month high on Monday as a weaker dollar made greenback priced bullion cheaper for overseas buyers while investors bet on a less aggressive rate hike trajectory from the U.S. Federal Reserve this year. Spot gold was up 0.7% at $1,878.06 per ounce, as of 0557 GMT, its highest level since May 9, 2022. U.S. gold futures also rose 0.7% to $1,881.90. The dollar index slipped 0.3%. London copper jumped to a more than six-month high on Monday while most other base metals also rose as demand prospects brightened after top consumer China reopened its borders. Three-month copper on the London Metal Exchange was up 1.1% at $8,686 a ton, as of 0639 GMT, after hitting its highest since June 23, 2022 at $8,711 earlier in the session. The most traded March copper contract on the Shanghai Futures Exchange advanced 1.5% to 66,100 yuan, $9,750.99 a ton. The contract leapt 1.8% earlier in the session to its highest since December 30 at 66,260 yuan a ton. We will now look at the top news in the agricultural Indonesia and Malaysia, the world's biggest producers of palm oil agreed on Monday to work together to fight discrimination against the commodity after a meeting between leaders from the countries. The comments by Indonesian President Joko Widodo followed a meeting with Malaysian Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, who was making his first overseas trip since being elected last November. Widodo, 
popularly known as Jokowi, said the two countries would fight discrimination against palm oil and strengthen cooperation through the Council of Palm Oil Producing Countries to address concerns. That is all for today's news on commodity markets. Stay tuned to Trade Flow News as we continue to provide you with more updates. We also invite you to follow us on Twitter at Trade Flow News, which allows you to watch our program on your mobile device or desktop to receive information from there.